Hey everyone. In this video, I wanted to talk about the Azure Arc Jumpstart kits. Uh, because many of us are looking at Azure Arc and trying to understand well how it can be used, what it offers. And I've done a whole bunch of different videos on Azure Arc going through the various different capabilities of the services, but often we learn best by just trying the things out. And it might seem that barrier to get it installed and try it out is prohibitive. So the whole point of the Azure Arc Jumpstarts is to make it super simple to start trying these things out. So it's about experimenting and learning. Now you may find some of the automations it uses, you'll take bits of it because you want to go and use it in your environments, which you obviously can, that's a choice you can make. But it's there to help you experiment, to help you learn, and it's all community driven. So everyone can contribute and make it even better. Now you'll see over here, I'm just on the main page. So I'm on the azurearcjumpstart.com. And straight away, there's some getting started information about the Jumpstart. I can view some demonstrations, but it goes into the key areas around the Arc Jumpstart universe. So the scenarios, Agora, Arcbox, HCI box, and the drops, which we're gonna look at all of those different things. It goes into information about the community. I can go and see some various demonstrations. I can get started quickly, so there's information there. And then blog information to again help learn. I can go and search the information. I can check out the release notes. I can go and see the GitHub, which is how we can go and interact and contribute to aspects of it. And then we'll see the various different key information around the scenarios, Agora, et cetera. Information about the community. So again, blogs, videos, and how you can contribute. The resources is fantastic. So I can go and download all of the different architecture diagrams that they leverage, some of the visual assets. There's training information, documentation on those key areas. So what I wanna do is just walk through those key areas that we can see over here. And we can start with the jump start scenarios. So as you can imagine, there's a whole number of different capabilities and I may wanna try those out on premises in my environment, or maybe I wanna simulate it using Azure resources. And that's what these different scenarios enable me to do. So I can onboard servers, uh, SQL, VMware environments, Kubernetes, the Arc, Edge capabilities, the information of things, the data services, app services. So it gives me a way to go and experiment and try those various different capabilities. So it walks through what they can do. And then you can see from here, it goes into detail about, well, hey, look, there's onboarding capabilities. Hey, things I could do this, leveraging Azure, and it walks through those. And then we move on to Agora. So Agora are the industry focused. And today it's focused on that retail and the manufacturing. And for each of those, it's gonna go through an example use case. So we have the Contoso supermarket, but it will give us an idea of well, what are the requirements we're typically having retail? What are the different ARC solutions that would come into play and what Azure services will they work with? Then it will walk you through a deployment guide, the data pipelines, all of the different capabilities that I would get for those industries. So if I'm in retail, if I'm in manufacturing, or maybe something similar in structure, I could go and look and get guidance on that. Then we get into ArcBox. Now you'll notice, I'm actually gonna switch over to the and preview documentation because at the time of recording, this is about to update. Now you'll notice for the ArcBox, there's really three different scenarios. There's ArcBox for IT pros, DevOps, and data ops. So depending on what my core area is, there's an ArcBox for me. And both the ArcBox and the HCI box are based around a really big Azure VM that's gonna go and set up a whole bunch of different things around those personas that will let me try all of the applicable scenarios. So obviously I'm more on the IT pro side. So if I go and look at the arc box for IT pros, well, it shows me the architecture. And this is the V3 that at time of recording has just come out, which is why I'm looking at the preview docs. And some of the nice things about the V3 is it adds, for example, the Azure Update Manager, 
and migration assessments, best practice assessments. And it doesn't just add them empty. What we'll see is the first time you log on, it goes and runs a whole bunch of automations. So it's going to go and run an assessment so I can actually go and see the various things. And then you'll go and see there's data in the Sentinel via Defender. You'll go and see they've simulated a SQL injection attack. So I'll be, go, be able to go and see that. There's an assessment so I can go and see the updates available. So the whole point of this is it doesn't just set up the empty components. It goes and sets them up in such a way I can start to experience and see the benefit they would bring for my organization. And the documentation walks through everything. So it's walking through, well, what is it actually leveraging? So it shows me the idea that, hey, it's deploying this really big VM. And then it's going to put Hyper-V. It's got nested virtualization. So it's going to go and create five other VMs, three Windows, two Linux, onto which it's going to run some various services. And then inside those VMs, well, it can arc enable the operating system. It can arc enable things like SQL. So I'll get to go and see even more of those capabilities. So it's going to walk me through how I do the deployment. It's going to walk me through what is the automation flow of what it's actually doing to power those things. And so I've got this deployed. This is kind of one we made earlier. And we'll see straight away, we have that great big ArcBox client virtual machine. And if we go and look at that ArcBox client virtual machine, yep, it's got 16 virtual CPUs and 64 gigabytes of memory. And what we'll also see in the resource group it deploys to, though, is a whole bunch of other stuff. And the reason for this is what it's doing is, well, it's lit up the operating system inside those nested virtual machines it's going to create in that Arc VM using Azure Arc. So I can see the operating system, those Windows and Linux VMs, I can see it as Azure resources because they've been Arc enabled. I can go and see the SQL Server. I can go and see the SQL Server database. So it's leveraging other capabilities that would be of interest to me to show me. I can see there's an Azure workbook down here. So it's going to go and give me information about the resources within there. And it, it's doing a whole bunch of other things. I can see a lot the more the database, the data collection rules. So it's giving me that full experience within there. You can also see it creates a virtual network. Again, it's leveraging a bunch of those Azure services so I can try all of these things out. Now, some of the cool things it's doing in this new version is it's actually switched to using Winget, which is Microsoft's own package manager, instead of Chocolatey for the various software installations as part of those automations. It's using PowerShell DSC to have a declarative configuration um, within those various capabilities that it goes and sets up. So I have my ArcBox client here. And so we'll connect to it via Bastion. And so we've got our Arc demo. And the documentation walks through all of the different passwords that it's setting up. But we're going to open this in a new tab. And what we'll see straight away is, well, we have the desktop. And I can see here, I've got my five virtual machines. So they are up and running on this box. Let me just see if I minimize uh, this Hyper-V manager for a second. So I've got my little command box I've got running up here. And what it actually does, the first time you ever log on, it runs a bunch of tests. So I've customized this a little bit, but you would actually see some information about the environment. So one of the things I could actually do, let me actually close this down. I was getting this demo up and running. But it, it actually runs an automated test the first time you log on and it populates some information normally on the background. So if I was to do this invoke test, it will go through and all of the key parts of this arc box, it goes through. And here I can see, hey, it's using PESTA, which is kind of the de facto testing framework that we use in PowerShell. And it went and validated all of the different things are connected and working. And it's showing me, hey, great. Yep, 21 tests succeeded. So I know I'm in a good state right from the start. Now from there, I know I've got these various virtual machines. Well, I want to go and connect into them to play around. 
Now the documentation walks through now how I can go and start getting started. It walks through all that deployment, but then it will walk through, well, how do I actually start using it? So if I keep scrolling down, I'll see, hey, connecting using just in time, the various scripts, using the art box for the IT pros, how to use SSH access. So as part of my ARC enabled server, without having to have a public IP, I can use SSH to connect to Windows boxes as well. But one of the really cool, nice things it does, and it, and it goes through this in the documentation, is I can also, let's go and have a look over here, I can tunnel. So I can tunnel RDP over that SSH connection. So you can kind of see it's a little bit dark by doing dash dash RDP. So it's going to use the Azure Arc SSH connection to that OS instance, but it's Windows. So I'd kind of like to have the RDP experience. So it's going to tunnel RDP inside the SSH. So I'm going to run this command. Now I'll have to do uh, as usual, as you would expect, giving me my password. So I'll just type in the password. Now it will open the MSTSC, but what do you notice about this screen that's different? It's connecting to localhost. Because again, the SSH connection has been established. Now I'm tunneling the RDP through it. So now I can just go into my credential. And now I'm actually inside that particular virtual machine. And now I would start going through the various scenarios. And one of the big things we'll see is I'm using managed identity um, for some of the other capabilities I'm hooking into Azure Arc and Linux virtual machines in Azure. There's an Entra extension so I can authenticate using Entra identities that then lets me use conditional access. I could go and start looking now at the Defender for Cloud. I would see that SQL injection attack. And what I would recommend is to just carry on going through the documentation and it will walk you through. So, hey, look, entry based SSH logon. How do I do that? It will walk me through the PowerShell remoting. It will walk me through the Azure Monitor Workbook, the Azure Update Manager, the SSH Posture Control, all of those various things. Just go and try those things out. It's a learning environment for you. But then once you've exhausted this document, we'll go back to the getting started and go and look at the scenarios. Scenarios for servers, scenarios for SQL. So if I go and look at servers, for example, one well, might be interested in the Azure auto-managed capabilities, and maybe I want to create an auto-manage machine configuration, custom configuration for Windows boxes. Fantastic. I can go and try that out. Maybe I want to go and try out the Azure Arc run command to go and execute things inside those different operating systems. Maybe I want to go and try out some of the SQL scenarios. It's there for you to go and learn and try all this out. And then I could go and look at the HCI box. Remember, Azure Stack HCI is that hyper-converged solution that typically we're going to use on-premises. Now, it's hyper-converged, so it's using local disks. Its storage space is direct, but it then replicates between the different nodes within my cluster. Then it adds on, uh, obviously, the different software-defined networking capabilities of Hyper-V. It's using the Azure capabilities to enhance different services around that. It's using the enhanced administrative interfaces for those solutions, but it gives me a local virtualization capability that when I then add in Azure Arc, it lights up those various Azure features and I can deploy all of that in an Azure VM as well. So it's saying, hey, my HCI box architecture and notice within there again, it's gonna deploy a great big virtual machine and that's going to create three other virtual machines, these virtual nodes using nested virtualization. And then I can go and see all of the HCI capabilities within there. And once again, it's going to walk you through all of those different capabilities. And then finally, we have the jumpstart drops. So the jumpstart drops is a gallery. It's a gallery that anyone can go and contribute to, and anyone can go and use the various solutions. Now, these can be small or large in scope. It could be a little script that does something. It could be a code snippet. It could be a documentation item. It could be a guide. It could be an architecture diagram. It could be a much, much bigger solution. But the whole goal here is I can go and look through. I can understand well, where do these solutions apply to? How can I leverage them? And this is the goal of the Arc Jumpstart. It is there to help you. Now, remember, 
if I do go and deploy something like the uh, Arc Box or the HCI Box, it's a big Azure virtual machine, but it's a virtual machine. I can go and stop it when I'm not using it and stop paying those compute charges. I'll just be paying for the disk. It's all deployed in a resource group. So once you're finished, just go and delete the resource group and you'll be good to go. But that is it. I mean, I really just recommend going and taking a look if you're interested in Azure Arc at all. This is a phenomenal way to get started and just a phenomenal way to evaluate, try out and learn the capabilities. I hope that was useful. Till next video, take care.